Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got nine new things to know about the new Insta360 GO 2. That's a small little action camera you see right there. Just a touch over two gummy bears high and about one gummy bear fat. It's definitely the smallest action camera on the market today, at least like from any sort of major vendor or anything like that. Now, this video is not sponsored by Insta360 or anyone else for that matter. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this camera. I've been using it for almost, I think, three months now, so quite a long time actually. So I've got a lot of things that I love and a lot of things that, mmm, not so much at all. And fear not, I'm going to justify both sides of that uh, in full detail here. Now, before we get to the nine new things, the price, it is $299 US dollars, uh, and that includes this clip that you wear on your neck sort of thing to hold on to it, uh, as well as uh, this uh, mount of sorts there. I don't know, there's not really a good name for it. Officially, it's called the pivot stand, because you can stand up like this and pivot it around, but uh, it's a little more complicated. That uh, does not include the GoPro mount that you see right here. Uh, I love that mount, that's the one I've been using primarily, uh, but that's that's fine, it's not too expensive as an accessory. So with that, let's talk about size. Now, you can see the size of that matter here, which is gummy bears. This is Haribo gummy bears, so the international standard of gummy bears. But if for some reason that's not an official metric for you, here is the height and the width of the camera and the charging case, because there are really two pieces to this. Uh, the camera itself goes and fits into the charging case like that uh, and then sorry you gotta just there I gotta kind of eat them and then this will go ahead and fold back up just like that so it's a little bit like an airpods case in a lot of ways it's this is a charging case as well as a connectivity case that connects onto your phone and you can control the modes right there so I can iterate through these video and photo and so on and then for the weights you've got up here the camera and then down here the charging case now of course while my video and every other video out there is talking about the size of the pod is sort of the refereeing metric on how big this camera is. The thing is, you pretty much always have to have a charging case with you. Yes, I can go out of range. I can hit record by hitting this button right there, and that starts recording. You see that white light blinking there? Uh, so that's the recording light. But as I explained in just a second in all the other sections, you won't want to stray far from your case because it's super dependent on it for a lot of other features. So let's talk about that case. The case, I would argue, is probably the strongest aspect of this entire setup. Uh, so obviously, it holds the camera itself. It acts as a remote control, so when I take it out like this, I can go ahead and control the camera, so I can press this recording stop button there, and you see it went to the blue steady on light, uh, which is white for you, uh, which means that it is now stopped. I can change the mode by pressing this right there. I can take a photo, for example. I'll go back here to photo. Uh, there we go, photo all the way through, and then take a photo, uh, because there is no other display or anything like that on there. There's only this white bluish light. Uh, that's the only indication uh, besides the button, which is depressing this right there. So the case is the charging case. It also acts as a way to add another two and a half times the battery life of the unit itself. Uh, we'll get into battery in just a second. Uh, on the bottom, there is a tripod mount, which is kind of handy, but then these feet open up like this, so you can use it as a bit of a tripod. So I can take the camera, plop it in like that, and then uh, use it as a bit of a tripod. Uh, closing it back up again, you'll see the USB-C charging port in the bottom, but this is probably the biggest downfall of the case. You cannot use a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. For example, I cannot charge this on my MacBook. Simply can't. I've talked to Insta360 about it, they said, yeah, that's just the way it is. So you have to use a regular USB-A, if you will, cable to plug it into the USB-C port here. It also means I can't use a lot of other random cables I have to charge it. For example, this USB-C charger. Nothing happens. It doesn't charge. Super big disappointment. I think a super big miss. Every other USB-C uh, device I have allows me to charge on USB-C. Now we do get there's an entire underbelly of USB-C PD and USB-C to USB-C specs and all the kind of stuff that has lots of complications. Now the bright side, you can go ahead and use it as a bit of a selfie stick, so holding it up like this so you can see the camera more easily. Now the final downside of this whole situation right here uh, is that despite the fact that it offers a red light, you just kind of can barely see it right there. Once I go over here for recording mode, uh, it only uses this white light. So I thought the rest of the world kind of standard on red for recording like three or four decades ago. So the white for recording just keeps throwing me off, especially since it's pulsing white for recording and static white for not recording. Anyways, uh, speaking of blinking things, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or something like that, simply go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps with the video and the channel quite a bit. Next up on the list is the quality and stabilization options. So what resolutions do you got? Uh, and this thing has basically 1440p and 1080p at 50 frames per second and at 30 frames per second across the board. Uh, but then within that, it's got three different modes. First off, it has a basic quality mode, which means that it has minimal stabilization. By minimal, it's 
pretty much junk. Uh, and then it has a pro mode, which allows you to apply the stabilization afterwards in post-production. Stabilization there is beautiful, no problems at all there. And then it has an HDR mode. And then beyond that, it also has a slow-mo mode, which is 120 frames per second at 1080p. So pretty much kind of like run-of-the-mill resolutions for a budget action camera but not really resolutions appropriate for 300 dollars action camera. Most of their options that are 300 bucks can do 4K easily. Still, despite that having 4K, the image quality is pretty good. In addition, beyond that, it has a time-lapse mode as well as a hyperlapse mode. In hyperlapse, they call that time shift though, but it's effectively the same thing. The hyperlapse mode automatically adjusts to the speed of the action. Uh, and in my testing, it did that fairly well. In fact, in the desktop app itself, you can see the different uh, speed changes at the bottom there, which is kind of cool based on my speed and how fast I'm cycling in this particular case. Uh, you can also even change the perspective. So you can go between wide and narrow and action and uh, linear, for example. All things you cannot do on a GoPro after the fact. That'd be super cool. And I love the fact that I can do that here just to change that perspective slightly. Now, all of this goes into a 32 gig internal SD card that you cannot change. So this has 32 gigs of storage on it and it's in there. That's been mostly good, except for one problem. If you use basic mode, that means that you've got plenty of storage because the files aren't that big. But in pro mode, which is what you're gonna to wanna to use for stabilization purposes, it's roughly one minute equals one gig. So you've got 30 minutes of potential storage on this. Uh, and if you don't have pro mode, your stabilization is crap. Uh, so here's an example of my daughter, like just plodding along at like half a mile an hour on the forest floor on a bike. Uh, and you can see the footage is pretty much useless. Uh, and the same is true of this other footage I have out there. This is in basic mode again. Uh, it's just not at all what I would expect from a 2021 action camera, let alone a 2019 or a 2020 or even a 2018 action camera in a basic recording mode. Now the flip side is once I go to pro mode, it's beautiful. It's silky smooth, you can see right here. It looks like it's flying along, the stabilization is good. As far as overall image quality though goes, I'm pretty happy with it. Like even at 1440p, that's more than enough for social type stuff uh, on your phone, you know, Instagram and even a lot of YouTube stuff. Uh, it's been fine resolution wise, color wise pretty good. It occasionally does blow out some of the highlights and stuff like that. Uh, you can see that in the corner of this shot right here on the left hand side with the clouds. It does this a weird like in and out sort of effect. Not horrific, uh, but once you see it, you can't really unsee it. So let's talk about the mount. Uh, now, this is something where I think part of the challenge with this camera is that it's so small, that it's really too small for most mounts. Uh, so on the back has a magnet, which means that you can take this and put it on something magnetic, like that right there. Cool, right? Kind of neat little idea. Uh, and it's, it's an okay thing for that. Like this is great, it's not gonna move anywhere. Unless my neighbor crashes through, we're totally good. But as I put up my daughter's bike here, it lasted like, four seconds, give or take, uh, with some minor roots on no roots at all, like perfectly smooth, going one mile an hour, three-year-old speed. It stayed on for like 30 or 40 seconds. But the second there was a single root there, gone. And in fact, Insta360 is pretty clear in their guidance not to use it anywhere there's bumps or any sort of like larger vibrations. So like from an action standpoint, you can't use the magnet. Instead, you pop it into a clip. So you got these clips like this, pop it in, and this stays pretty good. Like I've had no problems in this GoPro mount clip uh, staying put. It's the same magnetic clip as the uh, swivel clip here. Uh, and again, no problems. That's not going anywhere at all. It's, it's good there. They've also got this pendant thing, which uh, let's see, you wear it this way, like that. But you put this underneath your clothes. Uh, so it looks, I'm gonna regret doing this on my head. In here. There you go, like that. You're never gonna do that, never. I promise you, you will never do that. The theory here is cool. The theory is that you can replace a like GoPro style harness, a chest D, if you will, a chest strap, whatever you wanna call it. In practice though, because it's back to the magnet, you lose some of that stability. And, and again, Insta360 doesn't recommend that you use this in any sort of high action scenarios. If there was crazy rare earth magnets on both sides of this and it would stay put forever like this, that'd be awesome, that'd be great. Uh, but right now I can't really trust it like this. So that's kind of a bummer. And I think ultimately that gets to part of the challenge with this is that as amazing as the size is, practically speaking, when you go to mount it to something, you don't have a lot of options. And ultimately the mount ends up being way larger than the action camera itself. Take this GoPro mount that they've made here. This is great, right? You pop it in there. But once you put this onto something else, like once I mount this on my bike or on a car or anything like that, now I'm back to essentially the same footprint as a larger GoPro. Sure, the camera is smaller, but if you've done a lot of GoPro work, you know that it's rarely the camera's footprint that's the issue, it's the mount's footprint. Uh, and so I feel like they need a couple more mounts here. And then finally, the last issue with this whole thing is once you have a mount like this, 
even if you're like holding it or whatever the case is, the way this button is designed, you can see it kind of popping out there, means you're always accidentally hitting this button, either to record, to stop, or to start. One of the two options, it's never really what you want. I just want one of these buttons right here on the camera itself like a simple standard issue button. There's a good reason why everyone uses them that way. So let's shift over to the app. Now, by and large, most people would say that Insta360 app is probably their strongest overall suit in their entire platform. It's their thing that, that's like their shining star, if you will. And I agree with that. I think it's probably their most valuable asset. And it does a lot of things. And that's true of both their desktop app as well as their smartphone app. Uh, now, the idea here being that you connect up this wirelessly to your smartphone, download the footage, and then you can do processing after the fact. You can do stuff like toggling on flow state stabilization uh, or horizon lock. You can also add a boatload of filters and adjustments and all the stuff that you would expect from a typical like video or photo app is built into it. And by and large, it works pretty well. However, I would caution that when most people talk about all the greatness of the Insta360 app, they're talking about it in the confines or the context of a 360 camera. So a lot of the really cool features that you have on that side of the house don't exist here because it's just a single lens. But still, there are really cool features that don't exist on GoPro. For example, I can reframe, as I talked about earlier, between wide and narrow and uh, linear. That's something I can't do on a GoPro. And I can also change the perspective as well. So within that frame, I can say, you know what? I want the upper side or the lower portion of that. I can't do that in a GoPro. I can only reframe to, you know, 16 by nine versus vertical and stuff like that, but not to the extent that I can on the Insta360 app. Okay, so let's talk about something quick and easy, battery life. This is simple. The camera itself, this portion over here, is 30 minutes at 1440p, and the case itself is specced at 150 minutes uh, with 1080p. So you can basically take this then and recharge it in the case. Again, just like that AirPod analogy of taking these, put it back in the case, charge it, and then use it again. So you're theoretically always kind of topping it off. Oh, and to charge the camera in the case, uh, it takes 23 minutes to get to 80% and 35 minutes to get to 100%. So it's pretty quick charging. Okay, let's move on to another quick one, connectivity. Uh, so this whole situation here has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to be able to connect to your phone uh, and then transfer files over, it works just fine. You also have the USB-C port on the bottom right there to go ahead and transfer it to computer if you want to as well. Next, waterproofing. The camera itself is waterproof to four meters or 13 feet, has an IPX8 rating. Uh, so this entire thing can go in the water. If you take the lens off though, it won't live very long in the water, but that's just FYI. You can replace this lens, so fun fact for you there. Uh, the case, however, is very much not waterproof, so do not dunk that in the water. I'm mixed on that. Because I can't change or check or anything, any settings at all on the camera itself, even battery status, for example, uh, I often need the case nearby. And so if it's dumping out or from near the beach, I just wish everything was waterproof. I think that's probably the biggest strength of all these cameras over here. It's always waterproof all the time. Versus this feels like it's more like city friendly than adventure friendly. Okay, so for this ninth item here, I'm gonna do something a bit different in the past. I'm gonna talk about the five or so things they need to fix and then a pile of things that I love. Uh, number one here is I want a real recording button. This whole like, whole recording button thing is not at all functional. Like imagine if you used a GoPro by like pressing the front of it. That's silly, no one wants that. Uh, they want a, a darn little button that's just small and easy to turn on and off. Uh, number two, I want flow state enabled in the box for everything. There is no reason in 2021 that I should have to be reprocessing footage after the fact on the app. It should just be processed ahead of time in every mode of the camera should have great stabilization. End of story, period. Uh, number three, it needs more storage than 32 gigs. I mean, I appreciate the 32 gigs is in there, but if you're only talking 30 minutes of footage, that's not enough. I mean, come on, a 32 gig SD card costs $8 these days. A 64 SD card costs $12 these days. I would think at least 64, if not 128, built in for a device like this, especially a $300 device. Next, they need to make stronger magnets. If the idea behind this, and it's a good idea, is that you can take this and whack it anywhere and it'll just stay there for your adventure, then it needs to actually stay there for your adventure. Uh, and even like at the kid glove example of my three-year-old daughter, it fell off in a couple seconds. It's just not suitable for that. This is suitable for putting on a wall. So give me some awesome high rare earth magnets in here and I am totally with this. And last thing, the things I wanna change is the price. The previous edition was $199. I think that's an appropriate price. I think $299 is not an appropriate price for an action camera of this spec in 2021 or even last year or the year before. So let's talk about the things I do love. Number one, I think the case is great. I like the idea of it. Uh, I wish it was waterproof, but I like the fact that I can pop it in there and it acts like a little AirPods charging case. Fits my pocket way better than a GoPro does. I'm on board with this case concept with some minor tweaks. Uh, number two, the quality is good. Like I don't really have any issues with the quality of the footage, even being 1440p, like 
it's fine. People haven't noticed on my Instagram feed and whatnot. It looks great there. So that's good. The same is true for stability. Stability is by and large pretty good, especially with flow state enabled. Again, when you have flow state enabled in pro mode, I am totally on board with that as well. Also, I think the features for things like hyperlapse and stuff like that, that's all good for this camera price point. That's good there, just need higher resolutions. And then for the last item, I do appreciate that in the box, they included these mounts over here. Though I would argue I'd rather have this mount over here, the GoPro one, than those. I don't really think most people are gonna use this pendant one. I think that's like a marketing thing. Uh, and I think this one is cool as this kind of pivot mount could be. In a lot of ways, it duplicates this. Uh, so it's, there are some, yes, unique aspects of it, but not that many in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so there you go, a complete look at the Insta360 Go 2. Like I said, a camera with a lot of promise, but also a lot of marketing that doesn't quite live up to what I think it's trying to hit at this price point. Hopefully you found enough information in this video to make your choice on whatever action camera you're gonna get. If so, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.